Um, I'm calling the meeting of the Southern Berkshire Regional School District Subcommittee meeting 1651 to order at uh, 34 p.m. on Thursday, June 29, 2023. And as uh, Carl pointed out, the original posting had that we were meeting in the library, but subsequently changed it. And you, was, you all saw the signs leading you where to go if you came into the building. So Beth, thank you for doing that. Um, all right. Thank you to everyone who adjusted their calendars. And uh, just to let you know, I did finally get a farm for yesterday, but there was no longer 48 hours. So when you respond, you know, on the very day of, doesn't do any good. We had to have had the 48 hours. So thank you for adjusting as you did. Um, let's start with, are we ready for the executive session? You don't need an executive session. Okay. We're just gonna do it in open session. Okay. So shall we begin with that? Nope, we'll nope. just go in order of the agenda. Okay, great. The agenda had the executive session, so we're gonna go to um, standing reports. I'll accept a motion related to our minutes, if anyone would like to make that. I move that we accept the school committee meeting minutes, uh, committee, uh, 16, meeting number 1650 as June 15th, 2023. Okay, do I have a second for that? A second. All right, do we have any comments, corrections, any of the above? <clears throat> okay, seeing none then, let's move to a vote. Dennis? Aye. Okay, Sarah? Yes. Jim? Yes. Carl? Yes. yes. Kyle? Yes. Bonnie, yes. All right, approved. We oh, I should look and see if we have anyone out there. We don't. All right. Okay. Um, we have any miscellaneous correspondence that we do not. All right. Given that, let's move on to we have a student representative report. Not a representative report, but we do have a student spotlight. All right, student spotlight. So Mr. Miller's here if you would like to be a Zoom. Would you like to do the introduction? Sure, can you guys hear me? We Absolutely. Can. All right, so um, in the social science and history framework standards for third grade, um, I think most people know this because they've either had third graders or were third graders in Massachusetts at one point. Um, <laughs> but we learn, we learn about, um, our local history and our role in the American Revolution. We learn about the relationship between the settlers, um, uh, the Europeans, the Africans, and the native people. Yes. Um, and one way that Tom uh, Masters, who you're gonna see in a second, brought it to life with his third graders is through a, re a reader's theater workshop. Some of you may be familiar with these, but um, it's American history and it's set to a play, uh, a drama. Um, this is not a final version, so, um, this is not a, on the par with our theatrical theatrical productions, but I think it was a terrific example of student-centered learning, um, and the kids were just thrilled about it. You're going to see a short clip. This is a 18-minute or almost 19-minute enthralling uh, piece, um, but um, I think it speaks for itself. Uh, and the third graders walked away um, learning a lot and having fun. Yeah, just so just to set this up, we're gonna just show a couple minutes here. It's somewhere in the middle here. Boston Tea Party, uh, for sure. Oh, earlier, the colonists do not like the taxation without representation. <laughs> Following the Boston Massacre, colonies were unhappy with the terms and taxes the British government placed on tea. I don't like how I have to pay extra for my morning tea. Well, I'm afraid if these taxes continue, then the colonies will begin to rebel. On a December night, a group of colonists went to Boston Harbor dressed in a disguise. Boston Harbor will be a tea pot tonight! Let's throw it over! All 342 bears of valuable tea! You guys are so bold and daring. 
<laughs> this will be a new page in our history. With these great disguises, the government will never know who to charge. When King George found out about the tea party, he demanded that Boston pay back all the money that was lost. We are closing down the port until you pay for all that tea. And you cannot have any more town meetings. Now let us into your houses and feed us King's orders. They're such intolerable acts. Scene six, you say you want a revolution. Hi everyone, I just got back from the Boston Tea Party. Did somebody say party? I love parties, let's dance. <laughs> Not that kind of party. The Boston Tea Party was a protest of the Tea Act. The British government put a tax on tea that was being shipped off to our colony. <laughs> tea! Who has tea? I love tea! King George III just passed the Intolerable Act. Now the ha that harbor is closed, we can't have any more town meetings without approval. And I have to let the British troops stay in my house. They snuck up the bathroom last night. So we're sick of the British Empire trying to control. There's also a blooper reel at the end, believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> we could send so, them the whole thing for their I was just going to say, yes. if we could get like that, that suggestion, please. But I'll send the whole thing to them so they can have time to review the whole thing at a later date. Mm -hmm. Who wrote the scripts? So the Reader's Theater um, is the, the scripts are the kids are able to edit and add. And as you'll see in the blooper reels as well, they did a little improv. Um, but they're they're available pretty much. They're in public domain now for all sorts of different um, history and social sciences um, material. Uh, for example, today at summer school, um, our, our third and fourth grade cohort did a separate reader, Reader's Theater. But, you know, it's a great way and, and the kids, it brings alive the history and makes it more uh, meaningful and for, for some kids more memorable. Um, I will say the third grade does a really good job because we don't have a textbook of using primary source documents. And part of the standards at that grade level are also introducing, you know, kids to the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence and, and primary sources. So I think they do a terrific job and it continues in, in fifth grade with visits to the Sheffield Historical Society and, and some other um, field trips. Thank you so much. And this was all Tom Masters' class? This was his class, yeah. 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 Anyone have any comments here in, <clears throat> among us? Well, then you get a major thank you. I'll let, I'll let Tom and the kids know. Yeah. Um, it's just what we needed after <laughs> attending another meeting. <laughs> Thank you so much. Terrific. Okay. All right. Um, do we have any public comment? I don't know if I see any public out there, so we'll say we don't have public comment. Sparse. Yes. Sparse. Do we have the business manager's report? No report tonight. No report. Okay. Uh, business with district member towns. So update our regional school district planning board. Um, we just attended a full. Uh, Bullshit. <laughs> a full meeting of the regional planning board. We had to leave at 6.30 and um, in order for us to attend this meeting, they once again uh, uh, adapted a new regional agreement. So I would suggest going online if you want to see it. And this report, this meeting today approved the education subcommittees or board. And when we left, they were in the midst of reviewing the regional agreement. So it's still a case of the plan is that sometime in the next month to two months that the members of the regional planning board will vote on the whole issue of you know the recommendation of merger. 
And after that, obviously, a lot of um, public relations work is what the, they call it. They hired a public relations team to advocate on behalf of merger. We still have our motion that we uh, that was passed and relayed no more than 30 days before the actual vote that we want a more detailed presentation on finance. So you know, we do it, um, uh, Dennis was first. Who's who's paying for the for the special team of two that you just mentioned? Uh, the, the public relations, they said they have money in the grant money. So they're not turning to the towns at this point. They said the grants that they've received enable them to hire the team. And that was presented <clears throat> to us as the money is there. Okay. Even though other money has been churned down. So that's where we stand um, right now. And um, the movement continues moving ahead. Um, one thing I will say, there have been some absolutely wonderful articles that came out in the Monterey newsletter and in New Marlboro's. And I'm checking with council to see since these people wrote as either former school committee members that want to identify themselves as a member of a town and identify themselves as being a member of the school committee and checking with council whether that could be shared with all five towns. So I wouldn't do it until I got to get a complete declaration. But thank you, Kim. Thank you, Sarah. Jane, who's not here, thank you for um, the information that you provided and very well written and passionate. Um, that's where we stand. Today, they did approve, as I said, the, the full board approved the education committee's report with um, the only no's coming from our members, Southern Berkshire. And we had a couple of abstentions, including member from Egremont, who is not from our board. Um, and okay, Jim, you wanted to say something. Yeah, you said uh, that we wanted the information uh, less than thirty, not In more August. than thirty days. You meant less. Wait, I have it back. I felt you had it backwards. We wanted not less than thirty days yes, before. Yes, I thought that's more. what I said. Not less within the thirty yeah, day yeah, there, right. Okay, within that thirty day period. Right, and that's it's still not. anticipated that that will take place, that full vote will take place in towns in the fall. And I'll get you in one minute, Carl. I just wanted to indicate from what I've heard from a number of towns, people, because this is, they're being asked to call a special town meeting, which costs money to the town. So far, each town has, I don't know about your, they're saying they're adding other things to that agenda. If they are, well, if they have to do this, um, <clears throat> they're, if they're spending money that way, Carl? Uh, the record as it now stands for this meeting uh, has you saying we want to report not less than 30 days. You don't mean that. No. You mean within 30 days. Within 30 days. I am corrected by both Jim and Carl within the 30 day period prior to the vote that we have a presentation from finance. Okay. Um, anybody else from the regional planning board want to say anything to the others? And I will be completely open that my objection to the education report is I really think it didn't. Uh, it didn't. No substance. Thank you. That's the bottom line. There was no substance. That it really, there was so much more that I had anticipated going on this committee. So, um, oh, and, uh, yes, yeah, yes. 
George's yes. oh George's um, uh, oh he he can't at this point George I'm sorry um, uh, no that's that's fine buddy uh, I I thought you included me when you said any other participants and no, uh, I, I hope I am not echoing. No, 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 you'll be able, if you want to say something during the next public comment at the end, we're more than, you're more than welcome. I just had asked for public comment. I'm sorry. He's at the meeting. Yes. Oh, okay. So. Oh, right. But I can't because you're public. Yes. <laughs> All right. As much as I love to always hear what you have to say there. <laughs> All right, Chairman's Report, just a couple of things. One, I really appreciate everybody juggling as they did with attendance. I know we've asked a lot, particularly after nine out of 10 of you came to the town meeting with the superintendent. A lot of you have, as I put, both the children and some have children and dogs and some have dogs. So it, it takes a lot out of your calendar, but because of several things we needed to do before July 1, we had to have this meeting and it was virtually impossible to get one um, for most of July. So that's number one. Number two, I really wanted of you to know Stephanie Graham's trip to Italy, you cannot believe how ecstatic the kids are. Everything that's been posted everywhere and the kids were wonderful. They kept on thanking Stephanie. They kept on thanking the chaperones and they had an experience that Carl, you always talk about when you reach, you know, Sheffield. They just absolutely have been raving about it. And I think it was an looking at the itinerary, it was an incredibly well planned trip. And they had a phenomenal experience from everything from a Colosseum to an Italian version of a merry-go-round <laughs> and playing ski do or whatever that was that we played as kids. Um, they they just have absolutely loved it. The parent, the chaperones, the parents were there were sending posts, and you could see how others really appreciated it. And it, that wasn't an easy trip to put together. And they all thanked the Evo Fund as well, which tells us again how important support for that organization. So they did us proud once again. Um, and because of time, I'm just going to only to say, let's turn it over to our superintendent. Sure. Okay. So, um, oh, well, I feel like we were just here. Summer school just started, and we had our first administrative retreat um, the Friday after the last day of school, which we started already working on a year long schedule for next year. We did a year in review, kind of looked at the successes, challenges, ideas, um, et cetera, for. Um, uh, for what we have coming in front of us. Our next retreat is July 6th. Um, so yeah. that is where we're going to do our favorite Julie What, our strategy for continuous improvement, because um, we, we're always just slightly off of what we call it. So we just tease her a little bit. Um, we had applied for the Safer Schools and Community Initiative. That's not one of the ones that we've been talking about. Um, this was more funding to replace physical building elements. Um, for us, we applied for a door replacement. Um, there were uh, $13 million in applications and they had $3 million to give out. Um, so we were not chosen. Um, and they told me that Superintendent Nelson. So that's my new name if you need me. Um, so <laughs> Superintendent Nelson of Southern Berkshire. So. Um, Anyway, it's better than really my last name currently. It's easier to say, so we might right. we might stay with it. But um, yeah, so uh, so that was really for for physical doors, and um, you know, I, I knew I had most of my colleagues across the state. Almost everybody put in for it, so 
um, I think they need a little help with their allocation strategies. Maybe I'll, mm -hmm. I'll volunteer yes. in the future. Um, so in your folder, we did include a copy of um, the newsletter. I don't know if anybody has gotten it at their home yet, but be on the lookout for it. It'll be it's a lot easier folded in. Uh, but I wanted you to see it ahead of time. Did anybody get it? Anybody, anybody get, get it? Yet? It just was up for proof Monday or... Yeah, it I, I got it in the mail today. Perfect. And I saw that a lot of other people got it in the mail. Oh, great. Right. Right. When I was in the post office. Okay, good. So. Well, just in case, um, I wanted to make sure that the committee saw it because I thought it, it really was a, a, a really nice job done by um, members of the community um, outreach and advocacy committee and members of the administration. So I put it in here anyway. Um, just a little bit of yeah. something there. If you go to you, I don't know how many of you do use the post office as opposed to home. If you see that they're just piled up, which a couple of towns did do, we pay for delivery. So if you're seeing that they're not being put into mailboxes, um, you might speak to your town officials uh, so that they can join in, in making sure everybody gets it because I, I forgot which town I went to and I just saw them stacked and they hadn't been distributed or put in mailboxes. For this time around? Oh no, not this okay. time around. For, that's what I was just saying, okay. the previously. Mm -hmm. Because we also did make sure that we um, connected on the, for the villages Great. in um, New Marlboro. So cool. um, we should, you know, fingers <laughs> crossed, we should be good for this time around. I can let um, you know if we get it. Yes, I'll let please. you know if I get it. Yes, yeah, please. Yes. Okay. Please let us know. Um, I just want to do another reminder um, for uh, Lynette, if you are interested in going to the MASS-MASC conference, um, it's the same hotel that it's always been, but it's under new management and ownership, and I'm really excited new about name. that. Their right. Name. Yes, but let's hope they've done a little refresh, which I think they said they were. But um, please let her know um, so that we can get, because um, as she's booking, the hotel goes fast. So um, just let her know, make sure that we can all get into, into the hotel. Um, she also told me that, apropos of what you just said, that there's, we noticed last year the condition of the place was in it and really deteriorated yeah, yes and they said there's a major refurb with the new owners and the new organization there's a major refurbishing that's going on so I'm that's going to nice hotel for my for my room yeah uh too, <laughs> considering how sick i got in that place oh dear um this is these are all positive recommendations you'll learn yes. a lot um so i wanted to just say thank you to everybody who was part of um or could join us for the transcend site visit um i know it was back to back with a lot of things going on as bonnie said the community conversation and then the site visit so um it went i think extremely well um it was incredibly well received by members of the community who were able to join us um, I have received follow-up information from um, Jenny and her team, uh, which included what an informal agreement would look like if we so choose to participate, a slide deck, there's 40 or 50 slides, and some other resources. So uh, it says that we'll be contacted mid-July to make a mutual decision with um, the Transcend organization. Um, I... Uh, no, and I think she stated publicly to those who are around that she was making the recommendation that we be part of this next cohort. Um, I'm hoping that we could uh, schedule a follow up with those who were able to be here, um, whether it's Zoom or in person, the week of July 17th. Um, and I'll look at that day because the superintendent's conference, which I'm a member of the professional development committee, so it'd be very bad for me not to be paying attention during that week, but the week after, because I think by July 20th, everybody should know whether they're participating in the being that this is a joint decision. I want to make sure everybody has this information and is, is um, part of the decision-making process as to whether or not we all make this commitment for the next 10 months. So um, I will keep you posted once I hear a little bit more. Can I ask a question there too? You can try. I can try. Yeah. All right. Um, how will you go about making the decision that we participate or we do not participate? Um, well, I, I like I just said, I think it's um, I think we'll put out the, the information that I'm able to share 
um, which will include, um, it talks about the four phases. Uh, there's just a lot of research that I haven't actually okay. studied yet. So then I want to, I don't want to bombard everybody with every single piece of it. Um, I want to put out meaningful information and then um, uh, those who at least came and even if they couldn't come, they were on the list to come. Um, have those people see the information, this committee see the information, and then we'll all we'll all talk about it together and see. I'm going to turn to policy, both Carl and Dennis. Is this something that if we go, we take part in this, that the school committee has to approve or should approve? No. I don't think so. I think it's more of a, I mean, I think this is a collective goal between us and I mean I think I've been bringing the school committee all along. It's not like there's a dollar amount attached. Like I'm going to say there's you know we're going to get five hundred thousand dollars and then next year um, you know the committee has to figure out how they're going to do that. This is more of a um, a typical process I think that we're right for whether we got this grant or not. Right of of revisioning what education is going to look like moving forward. But don't you or don't you have to sign some type of agreement with them? And therefore, we should approve the authorization? Well, we're not there yet. Anyway. No, I, there. I have to just look at what the informal agreement looks like. Okay. So, um, Sorry to be picky. I don't it's think it's about being picky. Oh, I and Dennis told me I should have. Go ahead. Well, I, I, I mean, I don't think it's that type of thing. I think okay. it's more of a... Um, you know, a partnership with a, um, so if I, of course, I don't sign any agreement unless I bring that in front of you guys anyway, you know, mm -hmm. um, so uh, let's look at that and see what it entails. Okay, and then, like I said, I think it would be a, a community decision. Uh, perfect. You can't do it by yourself. So, mm -hmm. perfect. Dennis? Bonnie, if you're kind of concerned about that, you could put it to us as a question and then we could take a vote on it if you wanted. That's to. a very We're, good idea. Well, it's kind of like what it's the rules we operate by. So that's a very good idea. This point. So I think we, sh well, we're not scheduled for a meeting for a whole period of time. So um, are, you, are you suggesting a motion such as that we're approving the superintendent and her team um, continuing negotiations with Transcend? I mean, what is it you're looking for? It, it, what, however you want to frame it. <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> what would benefit you then, this in terms of support? So our next meeting is scheduled for July 20th. I don't see us making any decision before July 20th. Okay, great. So, so the way I look at it is I would just it. bring it to the committee perfect. at that point and if, if we're even at that point. So perfect. I think that's a perfect solution. So it would go on that agenda. Yeah. Dennis, thank you very much. <clears throat> My hand's still up. Okay. <laughs> go to it, sir. Okay. I just wanted to ask the superintendent a quick question. Sure. Uh, uh, point two on tonight's agenda. I, I believe that is the second, I think this is the second time in, cons in consecutive meetings that we have not chosen to get into that. We correct. Well, yeah. no, we're getting into it, but we don't need to go into executive session is, to get into it. I know, but is there is there a reason why we didn't get into it now for two meetings in a row? Because we don't need it. A meeting the first time we didn't need executive session because neither of the attorneys were were ready, and then it was resolved. So I don't need executive session. I will discuss it in open session. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So we don't need it. It was just on there in case we needed it. Right. Okay. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have other for us? No, that was it. All right. I have in terms of um, since we're definitely eligible and being encouraged to apply for the ARPA money. Yeah. Um, what do you need from us? What's taking place? I haven't even looked at, I haven't even had a chance to. Okay, because we don't want to lose that money. Okay, but I mean, so maybe we should right. form a committee of maybe some of you and some, I mean, you know, I, I don't know how many of us have 
the band. I mean, it's literally been four days. And, no, and, I'm uh, not blaming it. Well, I'm just saying, so what, I don't know what it entails. I don't know what the, so is maybe we want a little subcommittee with some people maybe. from the school committee and some of us um, to, All right, to so figure that out. So I mean, what's the deadline? It's uh, September 1. Oh, so we so, have some time. So basically we really encourage now that they're finally releasing the money, I don't know what's happening in the other towns, but in Sheffield, we're being encouraged to apply for the money and we're being encouraged to work with other, the most favorable is if we work with other organizations. So if one of the many things we do with the historical society, um, there's they're planning on, uh, giving out at least another $100,000. This is from the COVID, the ARPA money. Um, we're encouraged, we can put in multiple applications, but it's most favorable if we can um, do it with other organizations to show cooperation. So it might be great if all of you can find out what your towns, or do any of you know what your towns are doing What's the money? related to the ARPA money? ARPA. From, from the COVID, from COVID. Do all towns get so it? Up to yes. 100,000? Yes. Up to Sheffield, up to 100. Sheffield is saying up to 100 okay. that they're going to distribute. We don't know. A town could say, oh, we're taking all of this money and we're putting it into another fire truck. Cool. That sounds like that. <laughs> I think we already know. ARP, ARP. ARPA. So in What's other words, does for? anybody know what their town no. is doing? No. What's that stand for? What's ARPA? Oh, do you think I remember? American Rescue, Rescue. Plan something. Something. Um, so if you look, just call your town. Carl, do you know if Alford is doing anything in terms of distributing ARPA money? I don't, I don't know the answer. Okay. So let's, because it may be a case where we can cooperate with other towns. It, it's not one of those absolutely enormous applications. But if we can be creative about it, um, I've been encouraged in Sheffield that we should definitely apply and we could and we will definitely if we put in something good get some money. And this might be a time where maybe I like that idea that we could get an evil fund person mm -hmm. involved and you oh, well, I like that, that deadline. You may yeah, have that deadline, deadline was, was a lot earlier. That's a, so let's figure out who you want to put together yeah. for that. But in the interim, if everybody can contact their find town out. and find out what amount of money is available you know well what? i can do you know what it's for specifically what it's here it, it is supposed to be anything to make up for the losses so okay. particularly anything related to the broad broad field of the arts of the anything arts. related to what children lost and that can be done not necessarily in the arts but in any area um, maybe a special program that involves the community, you know, like the library and the school district, or maybe all the libraries in the school district, or, you know, the meeting house and, or the Fisher. It's, they're looking for ways to use the money to compensate the, for what citizens lost. And they're particularly targeting that it's in the more creative areas. So, you know, they're not really looking to buy books because you didn't budget for books. Not that we we take care of that. Mm -hmm. So, and find out. I mean, I was told specifically the type where we should go in Sheffield in terms of they said they were encouraging that we would work with other organizations that would be favorably looked at and that it would benefit children and people in Sheffield. Okay. So they're not interested in us doing something, you know, to help Pittsfield. Okay. So if I talk to, to, if so if I talk to the town clerk tomorrow, she will look at me like I have two heads. Well, well, what? If I talk to the town clerk in Egremont tomorrow, she will look at me like I have two heads. No, she'll know what I'm talking about. Okay. 
that this money is now being released. Okay. And I don't know, they should have met as select boards in order to determine what amount they are giving out to organizations. Okay. Would All that right. be the finance committee also? Or could be? Could be. I don't know how it goes through in, in each town. It's different, but I know I the official, you know, okay. by, that word Sheffield is definitely doing that. Okay. And we'd like to, if we can get that information, like, you know, by the end of next week, because I know July 4th is in the middle of all of it, so that, that you know, we can work on it and not decide on August 15th. Oh, by the way, we didn't do. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, we don't want to make it any more difficult. All right, Julie. Hi, how are you? Sorry that I can't be with you today. Uh, I have a very short report. Um, so I spent the week uh, putting together for our teachers their professional development certificates. And I had a nice thick stack that I handed to uh, Beth to sign last night. And she said to me, gee, we should really highlight all the uh, great professional development that our teachers are getting. And I thought we should do that. So um, as you all, are aware teachers are the heart of education and uh, vital to the success of our students in their growth. And so we consider it a number one priority that we invest in the teachers and their professional growth and well being. And so, at least since I've been in the position, we have really focused on ensuring that we have had continuous, ongoing professional development throughout the school years that have supported um, the teachers in current research best practices. So um, the goal is that we are providing our teachers with the tools and the support that they need to meet the needs of all our very diverse students. So this past year, we had professional development in universal design for learning, math, ELA, and responsive classroom. And when I was going through these, the spreadsheet to make all these wonderful certificates, I realized that um, the teachers who had participated in all the universal, for, universal design for learning PD had received 15 PDPs. And as a requirement for them to renew their license every five years, they have to have 15 PDPs um, that have to do with English language learners, and they have to have 15 PDPs that focuses on students that learn differently. And so the universal design for learning ones qualifies for alternative learning. And then um, Sandy has set up, which is happening in a couple of weeks, an opportunity for them to do an online training where they will be able to get the 15 PDPs that they need for English language learners. So within a year, we have provided them at no charge to them, their 30 PDP requirements for renewal of their license um, for their five-year cycle, which is something to really be proud of being from such a small district. Usually that is um, that burden is put on the teachers to find and spend their own money on. So we're really proud that we've been able to do this for them and hope to continue. And that is it. Great. And how many thank you letters have you received? Uh, I know. I guess I know. But it was a lot of pressure last night. Julie, thank you so much. Thank you. Any questions for Stolen? All right. Sandy. Hi, good evening. Um, I'm also sorry I can't be there and I keep getting booted out. So I'm gonna keep my camera off rather than being in the middle of my report and getting booted out again. Um, so good evening, everybody. I did um, write up a report to share some information with you. And as Beth had mentioned, summer school started this week. So we just completed our first week already. There's four more weeks. Um, scheduled next week, a short week because of the holiday. So it's only running on Wednesday and Thursday next week, but 
going very well so far. So thanks to all the staff who are making that happen for our students. Um, I gave you some information. We did receive notice last Thursday that we again qualify and receiving funds for the summer step up grant. And they awarded us $56,000 for the summer program, which is terrific. Um, we're busily uh, getting the information together to um, share with them because it is quite a bit of data, but that is okay because um, it really does support our summer program, including transportation, which is great. Um, also, we've been working on our circuit breaker um, uh, claim for this year, which we have complete. We're going to review it again next week before we submit it. It's not due until July 14th, but for anybody who has any familiarity with that particular um, um, process, it's very laborious. So we were able to get through that and that targets um, the, our highest need students and provides us with reimbursement, um, I believe still up to 75% for any cost over the foundation amount. So that's wonderful. And I'll give you a report once we get that finalized to let you know exactly what we're qualifying for this year, as far as our circuit breaker reimbursement. And um, we have a lot of planning going on this summer. I was really happy to hear Julie say um, that the UDL training um, does qualify for the 15 PDPs for working with children with learning differences. That's great. Um, the Sheltered English Immersion 15 PDPs that's being offered through um, the Collaborative for Educational Services and Albert Musad, who's amazing, um, is also being funded by the Title III grant, which is good news as well. Um, so our grant funds are really being put to good work and a lot of planning. Okay. Mm. And a lot of planning is happening um, for next year right now. So we're taking a look at all of our student needs and our staffing and making sure we make the best decisions for our kids going forward into the 23-24 school year, which believe it or not, will be here sooner than we think. Mm -hmm. That is my report for tonight. I hope you all have a happy 4th of July. Hey, I'm just here real quickly. Um, any questions, Ms. Sandy? All right, I would like to know how did the screening go for the new students? Oh, it went really, really well. Um, uh, very efficient. Uh, most of the screenings were completed by 3 p.m. There was a couple of students later on. I saw a lot of happy faces. We have the results already. The people who um, did that screening, including you know Kelly McDonald, I just can't give her a shout out enough for the coordination of that particular event. Um, it went incredibly smoothly and we already have the data and are making some plans for how we can appropriately place the students in their classrooms and also how we provide um, supports in and out of class for children who might have some delays that are showing up on the screening. So it went very well. How did our, how did our numbers look? Oh, the numbers are, they were better than I even thought, actually. I was um, a little surprised. I, I, they were higher than I even thought. So I'll have a better picture of that um, the next time we meet, and I'll give you more information. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right, Sandy, enjoy your time. <laughs> Thank you very much for the information there. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. All right. New business. Uh, ready for the solar? As ready as we're ever going to be. So okay. Okay. So in your packet are um, copies of, um, according to Attorney Campany, the what the attorneys believe uh, would be the final versions of the PPA and the um, and don't ask me. It's like power purchasing agreement. Look at me. Um, and the lease. Um, that uh, was put together for the solar project. I just wanna say that this, these documents aren't really new documents um, in any way. Um, they've been in the packet and the presentation has been in your packet um, multiple times previously over the last several months. Um, as you know, we did have some, uh, we did have an executive session to discuss some items that um, the attorneys were discussing. Uh, and attorney Campany said that um, 
what, what she said today is uh, in their view, from a legal standpoint, the provisions in the versions of the PPA and the lease are reasonable and acceptable as reflective of the industry-wide agreements for power purchase agreements and lease of rooftop space for solar arrays involving municipal entities. So she said, although both agreements contain provisions that require significant concessions and commitments by the district, meaning we're doing a 20 year deal, um, things that are allowable um, with this technology, um, these concessions and commitments are industry standard and would be required in any or all these types of solar power agreements entered into by a municipal entity at this time. She said, of course, the final decision maker as to whether or not to enter into this transaction is the school committee, and the school committee needs to approve the documents. If the documents and transaction are acceptable to the school committee, then the committee should vote to enter into the PPA and the lease substantially in the form attached, and two, to authorize the school superintendent or the chair of the committee to sign the final version of the PPA and lease on behalf of the district. Um, she was saying that at this point, the reason we didn't have an executive session is that it appears that the negotiations relating to the agreements have concluded. The vote to enter into the agreements um, and to enter uh, either to authorize the superintendent or the chair to sign the agreement should be taken in public open session. So that's what I have from the attorney. <clears throat> Okay, so yes. that we can discuss this, we should have a motion on the floor. Correct. So we have a motion on the floor for approval of this lease agreement. The PPA and the lease document. The PPA and the lease document. So moved. Okay, we have a second. 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 Okay, we have a motion and a second. Now discussion. Dennis. Yeah, I, I guess the only question I have is if you look at page 53, of the uh, the power purchase agreement, mm -hmm. uh, the, the only question I have really is that uh, uh, do we already have a uh, power you know a a, uh, a I'm sorry a billion dollars or a million dollars set aside for such an occurrence as you know general liability or. Two million in the aggregate. Do we, we meet, already? We meet all the. We meet. We meet all of that. That's right. So that so all has to be reviewed. Ahead of time. Okay. So th this is we're already at those rates with our this? current insurance. Right. 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 That's all. That's that's the only question I have. Okay. No, additional questions. Uh, yeah, I, I, I read the entire agreement and I find it wanting in a number of respects. Uh, the early termination amounts, uh, we have to pay <clears throat> over a million dollars in the first two years, 950,000, 920,000 or so in the third and fourth years. 830,000 in the fifth year. Uh, if. Uh, Carl, what page are you on? Yeah. What page is that? Uh, that specific chart that I'm referring to? Page 48 of the agreement. Page 48. Um, 48. Yeah. Okay. Page 48. Yeah. Um, if uh, we didn't negotiate that, and in fact, the representative of Solvay specifically so, told us that that wasn't negotiable. So if, for example, that this school is sold or destroyed, well, if it's destroyed by some act of God, then it probably doesn't fall within force majeure and we would have to, uh, in other words, if the school building was not habitable, for a period of a year, two years, whatever it is, uh, those are probably that would probably not be flood, uh, catastrophic, catastrophic weather event or other event. That that is probably not within the definition of force majeure as it's determined by by most courts. That would mean that we would have to pay those those amounts. That we would have to pay those terminate termination amounts, uh, which in most instances 
would more than make up for any savings that we're getting uh, under the agreement. Um, they're, they're, uh, I mean, I'm not going to waste time going through it. I, I would never, uh, if I, if I were the sole person making the determination on behalf of the school district, I would never do it. But that's my personal opinion, and I, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't think I'll convince anybody, but I don't think it's a good agreement, and I don't think it was really negotiated. It was more or less dictated, as the sole representative said that that they dictated that these are the terms that we use, and there really wasn't much negotiation. That's what he said. That's that's from the mouth of the person of their representative. So uh, that, that, that that's one, one of the things that came out in the executive session that we had and the discussions with Nancy Campany is that there isn't much but there isn't much to discuss because there isn't much to negotiate because they don't allow us to negotiate. I don't think it's a good agreement. And I don't think it necessarily saves us money. And to Carl's point, isn't that what the insurance is for? If our school, because most insurance policies have lack of use on them, which is coverage, which would cover that issue. I mean, I would say if our insurance company says, if our school burns down, termination, I assume there is a clause someplace that says, if our school burns down, the equipment burns down, we're not paying a lack of termination fee. I'm pretty sure it'll say it's so. Uh, and I would like to know that. Well, well, Carl, we, do you want to respond to that? No, well, I, I, I would like to know that. And we can't know it tonight because our insurer, our, our insurer, a representative of our insurance company is in here. But um, if there's no equipment, Carl, I don't think they can charge us the termination if their equipment is gone well, and, the, and the wiring is gone and what, everything's gone. What do you base that on? You just said that if for our school is devastated, non usable, et cetera, et cetera. That means their equipment is no longer usable, which means there's no benefit for either party, correct? No, of course there's a benefit. For Where's them. the benefit? If you can't get sun to get electric to get to the school or get to them, there's no nothing being made. That, that's not a benefit to them. That's a cost to them. The benefit to them is the money we pay. But they that's can't, the only... if they can't operate their well, equipment, and their equipment's not working, they can't penalize us for their equipment. That's simply just untrue in terms of contract law. It's untrue. Okay, so let's just go back to what was on the table, right? This contract was, the, I mean, all of this was already out there and discussed. There were, there were five points or whatever that we discussed in executive session, right? That, that, do you remember that? Thing? You were there for that, right? So those were the points on the table that, and Nancy was very specific about what she would not allow the district to enter into unless those points were met. I don't have them in front of me this second, but those are the ones that they, that she negotiated. We all, those were the five that were outstanding that she negotiated to the position that we wanted. Right, that the outstanding position is the position that was most favorable to the district. So that is the only reason she's recommending this. That was all that was outstanding. The rest of this is as is and is nothing different than what we said it was going to be. And I do believe that she did, one of the things that she did talk about was uh, an early terminating then I'm gonna find it in my, in my notes quickly, but that was one of the, the early termination um, issue. The well. easement, right? So that was done. They took responsibility for that. He was concerned about um, early termination title. The, mer the market, they're taking responsibility. Like there is no early termination if for some reason um, there is a merger. There is a merger. There, there is language in there that says um, that. Um, they would negotiate with the successor or it would be there's no like penalty to us if if oh, because of a merger it goes away. Yeah, that was my thing. Yeah. So all of those things, all I'm saying is she negotiated, she would not have sent me in to say 
we are comfortable with this document if all of those items that were outstanding had not been met to the level that she believed was okay. And that's what she told us in executive okay. session. So I will say that the provider will provide insurance to cover operations. Yeah. Yes, it's right here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Under exhibit G. That's what the insurance is. She's comfortable with the insurance level. The provider's general liability insurance shall include broad form property damage liability, products completed operations liability, and broad form contractual liability. Can I ask a question? What do you think that covers? But it goes on to no, but what did that cover? What 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 are they maintaining? Operations liability. What does that mean? I would say that the operating they're liable for the operation on their side. If they cannot operate, they cannot charge us. But it doesn't say that. But exhibit G is being presented to us as our attorney who really was a stickler for all of this um, says that this covers us. And I understand really, Carl, you're being very cautious on our behalf. What is it in Exhibit G that that you believe doesn't protect us enough? We, we, the host and the provider, maintain general liability insurance. Liability. Mm -hmm. yeah, Li property loss. And additional insurance. And additional insurance, which is probably there. Provider shall carry adequate property loss insurance on the project which need not be covered by the host property coverage. The amount in terms of insurance coverage will be determined at the right items that are expected. This gen general liability insurance. Liability I is <laughs> li we all if we own a home, we all have liability insurance. Otherwise, you can't have a more you you you, you bank your I know providers. You but this as under here's the rule of law. The he, the heading is general liability. Liability means liability insurance. Most often liability insurance takes the form of loss for causing injury, injury to person or property, causing injury, not not as a result. Of injury. If you cause, well, as, please, please, okay. can, don't interrupt me and I will okay, not interrupt okay. you, okay? okay because you do that a lot. Okay. And uh, liability insurance, that general heading, li general liability means liability insurance. It doesn't mean insurance for anything else. And in fact, later on, workers' compensation, mm -hmm. that's a form of insurance, property loss, that's a form of insurance. So please, wait, wait, let I'm them. agreeing with you. Let's I don't care if you agree. The point is, the, the point is that general liability is one of the forms of insurance. When you read from that and said if the if the equipment can't work, can't be used, there's no there's no obligation for us to pay. It just simply doesn't say that. And you can bet that their lawyers will maintain that if there is a lawsuit and they sue us for the amount due. I mean, I'm I don't know what how people are going to vote. I can't possibly vote for yes for this. If I own this corporation, this school, I would not I would never approve it. Right. That's well, me. Let me ask you a question. Then. Could you go to the very under five back page and look at the last bullet? Does that in any way address your concern? No, because it says excess liability insurance. There is a difference between workers' compensation or workers' compensation insurance, um, uh, loss of use insurance, liability insurance, it's liability insurance. If, if the car drives into your car, that's li that is what a liability insurance is. If you slip on wet vegetables at Big Y, that's liability insurance. I'm not, I'm, this is not projected, yeah. this is not wishful thinking. Right? Right. Thank you. Um, uh, but, but that, that's how you interpret contracts. But you go to the general head, general liability, property loss. Those are two very different things. Yes. You can have, in fact, in a homeowner's insurance, you need to have liability insurance. You don't need to have property loss insurance. You can waive property loss insurance if you want to. In fact, I've done that on my own property because I have 
a, 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 an artist studio that is not in great repair. I am told the insurance company to exclude it. You can't exclude liability insurance or, or, or your right. bank. I, under, I understand yeah. what you're explaining. Yes, yeah, so that, that's so my all. question is yeah. that last bullet does that provide us the necessarily extra workers come and um and and general additional requirements that last bullet does that cover the issues that you've raised and if it doesn't why doesn't it? commercial general liability because of the term liability it doesn't cover it doesn't address any issues yeah. of, of 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 insurance other than liability insurance so and it's also a very small amount million dollars that's uh, reason well two million, million in the aggregate yeah, yeah okay well that's yeah a million no, a, I, million, I understand. a million dollar verdicts happen every day right i mean it's like they're telling us as owners just as a home you know you gotta go beyond that but we also have a huge umbrella over the whole district on top of all of this. Oh, that's so true. all I'm asking is under here, these are insurance requirements. It means I have to carry all five of these at those levels. So what, Carl, are you saying is missing out of this that you would like to see as, as something else that needs to be required? Because it's not, they're not just saying you have to carry just general liability. They're saying all five of these is a requirement. Yeah. So what is what is the what is not here? Although some members of this committee speculate that if the building becomes unusable, un unusable, we will not be subject to an early termination fee or payment of the amounts due. I think that by not stating it in the contract, they, the provider, SOLEC, will make the argument that we, that if it's not their fault, if they are not responsible for whatever uh, makes the school unusable, we have to pay the amount that we've contracted to pay. And, there's, and it, in fact, if they didn't mean that, our lawyer should have said to them, well, if that happens, let's cover that. When, right. you, don't, okay. when you don't cover something in a contract, and this contract is 54 pages long or 55 pages long, when you don't cover it, it's a fair assumption that you considered it and you didn't mean it. It's in the contract. Okay. Kyle. If the school, I mean, is there anything written in here that says you need to use so much energy produced by the solar panels per year, you have to keep the lights on for this long. No, that you have to they're charging there's such an on something I interrupted you. Yeah, no, that's what, I, what I'm saying is like, you know, can the teachers decide we're going to turn the lights off for a few minutes in this classroom and you're then not selling us as much power during that time. Like we didn't have to terminate the contract. The building's unusual, uh, unusable, the building's unusable. We didn't terminate the contract. We didn't say we're terminating this contract. Like that's it's not you could just say like we're not using the power for this year because we're not here uh that's not necessarily a termination of contract is it no in fact it's not a terminate we we're worried about not being able to terminate the contract if we don't need their power it's exactly a, a flipping on its head what you just said but they're selling us the power based on what we use right uh, yeah, but but that's all set. You know, they they project what it will be. That's where they take a gamble. They're saying, you know, this is what we're saying you're going to use. I don't think that's where the big issues come. I think the issue comes in what Carl is saying, and for me, that that's where I have I can see an issue. Are we? Exposing ourselves, but I don't think Nancy so can right in, here. in any way would have said yes. Can we also sell the power back to National Grid that isn't being used? Isn't that another thing that happens? So, producing power that we're not using is getting sold back to the grid. 
it does happen, but I don't think that's covered. But aren't you, aren't you talking about, well, like, so, so you're saying on page 27, what you're saying, 27 under 17C, is that what you're talking about? It says, in the event of a casualty that that uh, is attributable to the occurrence of an event that is that destroys a substantial portion or all of it, the host shall elect within 90 days whether it restores it. But if we don't elect that, right, then the providers, it says it will terminate without penalty to either party. You're talking about page 17, 27, 27 page, paragraph not. Page, page 27, oh, right, 17C, right. the first couple of sentences. I, I, is that what you're talking about? No. Though? Well, well isn't that what you're saying? Well, this is limited to an event of force majeure. Uh, well, I mean, wasn't that what you were describing? No, because force majeure is a term of art. And uh, a building destroyed by a flood, that's not necessarily force majeure. That is a matter to be determined by a court hearing the dispute. Um, so, and and the nature of what is Force majeure has been narrowed over over the last several decades, and so this provision, paragraph seventeen, is only related to force majeure. So first, there has to be a determination that an event uh, uh, is in fact force majeure, which of course would go either way. So, uh, what would make you comfortable with this contract? That was my next It'd be rewritten. Yes. That's what would make me comfortable. It'd be rewritten. Which is there a symbol re rewrite that no, never for a lawyer. Never for a lawyer. Uh, a well, I, I would say that um I would be more comfortable with it if we could there were there was le less imbalance of in the ability to get out of the contract. If they go back to us, they're out of the contract mm -hmm. um, by operation of law. If they're bankrupt, then it goes to the bankruptcy court. They can stop providing us electricity right away. In fact, depending on what chapter of the bankruptcy mm -hmm. is. Uh, no, uh, um, but... You're interested in protecting us yeah. as a school. Yeah. Is and, there and, a and there simple... other things, Yes, there are other things that no one can say that electric rates won't go down. I know you brought this up before. Yeah, right. That electric, and they say, well, traditionally electric rates haven't gone down, but that's not true. They mm -hmm. have gone down recently from national grid. So who knows? I mean, you know, there, there may be. Uh, we don't know what's happening in the next 20 years. Uh, I, you know, I, I, I don't expect my objectionable hope will, will, will carry the vote, but, but it's, it's, it's what I would do and wouldn't do. I don't know. Can, so yeah. can we assume that our attorney has gone through all of this contract too? And that, uh, yes, Nancy. Yeah. who originally didn't want us to sign it, right. had five major points, right. and in her communication and what she did in negotiating this, all five okay. have been addressed. Okay. What Carl is pointing out, I think, is he doesn't feel, even with those things addressed, that the school district is protected enough to make him comfortable with a vote for it. Am I correct in interpreting yeah, those things? Yes, that's fair. Okay. Yeah. All right, Kim. Did the lawyer review their insurance policy? Their insurance policy? Yes. They have to have some kind of insurance guidelines that they're saying in order to write this, like, I have a business. I have a certain insurance policy, like liability. But in my insurance policy for liability, if we cause damage to a house that we are liable, there's a part that says the customer gets like alternatives, reimbursement or whatever for lack of use in my liability insurance policy. Everyone's different. Did she review? I don't think it's her. I don't think it would be in her purview to ensure. I, I think she reviewed 
the agreements, exactly these two documents, based on the other 68 done in the state of Massachusetts and across the, you know, I mean, I think this is, this is common. Um, there are documents that have been um, reviewed, and I think, but I don't know that she went to their, I can't comment on that. I can tell you what she reviewed. She said she reviewed this document and the BPI. Okay. She's also done, she's also negotiated several of these um, prior in other school districts across okay. the state. So, so she's this isn't like, you know, no, first. first. Sorry, Liv. Um, do we have a time? That, I mean, this we've been driving this. No, I know. Been, I know. We've been, you know. So, I mean, at, at some point, you just have to assume this is the same thing. When we bought, I will just say in general, right? At, 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 at some point, you are assuming some risk because, correct, with whatever you do, right? There's going to be, you know, there's a potential of the whole world can fall on you, you know. And when when I negotiated, when we originally did power purchase agreements on solar fields, right? We all bought all school districts bought um, credits, right? We did that years ago. And my attorneys went ballistic. They lost their mind. They're like, what are you doing right over here? You know, they went crazy. They did this. We did 57 back and forth. And in the end, we got as comfortable as we could with the contract. We assumed the risk. And guess what we did? We saved money. I mean, I think at some point, we just have to decide whether or not we have done everything in our power to provide some type of savings and some type of green for our communities, that, that's the goal. All right, let, let me say this. Carl has brought up some real concerns. I we or we could spend hours on this, but just before looking and seeing whether we should take a vote, which because we have a motion on the floor, does anyone else have anything else they want to raise? Dennis? Yes, you know, the, the area where I'm probably as concerned as what Carl is, is look at page 48, Exhibit B. Exhibit B, basically, this, as I recall, was forced in in this, in this manner as a fixed item that they would not negotiate. Is that true, as I recall? I mean, I that that's, uh, you know, and, and in, in my mind, straight. I seem to remember that, that they were adamant, you know, the, the company, that we're dealing with here, that, that this termination page needed to be in the contract. A concern that I have is uh, we now, as a body, are involved in whether or not we'll even exist in X number of years. So okay? that was addressed. Which basically says, all the towns would then have to kick in no. money on this. No, no, that has already said, there's that a, has there, been addressed. It's already addressed. They said that if, if this building, due to the merger, is it there's where does it say that? It was one of the five points. So somewhere in this agreement, or somewhere is where they have addressed. It. I don't know the exact. Well, if we cease to exist, the same point as Carl cease to exist if they go bankrupt. If we don't exist, how do you enforce the contract? Exactly. Well, we're the, no the longer. Wait, let's not go back because we're no longer Southern merger. No, they'd sue the towns. Yeah, yeah, that's what they did. Oh, you better believe it. They'd sue. They they come after the five oh, towns. Again, I'm, at some point, we're going to have to trust that the, what the attorney said. We we asked her to go back and negotiate it to make sure that we weren't going to be in that position. And so at some point now we're just rehashing. So let's look okay. and see where if we can find it. I'm gonna look and see if I can find it in her. Well, it, it's it's it's, it's, it's paragraph ten, starting on page eighteen, which page is 18. headline: like shutdowns, relocation, closure, or closure or sale of site. And in fact, if you look at look at look at E under that 10D premises shut down, interconnection deactivated. In the event the facilities where the premises are located are closed, post shut I left the interconnection because this because that's what we're talking about. The premises are closed, host shall not be excused. For the period of closure or deactivation for paying provider for all electricity produced no. by the project on the premises 
uh, and delivered to the point of delivery unless such closure is caused by one, a force majeure event, or any unexcused action or inaction on the part of the provider. That means that we are responsible if the school closes. Now, that's, there's a difference. Then there's so one right below it says by sale, lease, or otherwise, all the portions of this interest in the site except host shall remain primary liable to provide for the performance of the obligation. The hosts are under the standing uh -huh. However, if no host event or default has occurred, the continuing time of transfer and the transfer is acceptable. Oh, so okay, this is, this is what it says reorganization select is accepting that a district consolidation and reorganization may happen and SBRSD will be permitted to assign the surviving entity so long as the assignee cures any outstanding payment and indemnification obligations if the PPA is terminated in the process the lease continues and select can sell energy to other off takers until the early termination amount is paid so we're not necessarily paying they're just using right the where, where is that, Beth? Can you give us the reference? This is the, I, this is what they gave me as as the open issues, right? We, these were the open issues that they had. But where is it in the I, contract? It's not in the contract. I, um, the, the, this is what Beth had hearing from Nancy. Sure. Well, this brings up another issue. We're making something uh, an obligation without the regional planning board. Oh. No. Oh. Um, is are there any other questions? If not, I think we should take a vote. Yes, yes Kyle. Uh, can I be reminded of like the overall yearly operating budget? Like our our operating budget? Yeah, we're at I think we're at 191. 191, I think. I mean, you know, inflation was like up around nine percent different yeah. times this year. Our operating budget only went up four percent. The early termination fee, it's like it's not that big a deal in the grand scheme of things, I don't think. I think you know, if you make a mountain out of you know one eighteenth of the operating budget if we don't make it through year one. I mean, I think we'll make it through year one probably, probably make it through several years and there's a lot of insurance in there. I think it's a reasonable risk, like very reasonable. The other districts have done so. it, correct? But uh, they think there's something like, I think they said they did 68. So with a pretty Would standard you? contract. Okay. Um, I will. I mean, I'm not saying there's no risk. I'm saying right. that, okay. so that you have to get to a, a minimal risk that where the cost benefit is outweighing for no matter who has the building. Okay. Anything the school does is has some sort of risk. Right. All right. So with that said, let's go ahead and take a vote. I'll start at this end. Kim. Yes. Kyle. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. No. We have one, two goes. Four yeses. One, one, two, three, four, four yeses. Um well, it won't make a difference how I vote. But I'm voting no, that it still carries. Okay, you can move ahead. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Let's hope for the best. Don't sound so doing. No, no, no. I don't mean that you are hoping. And then, Carl, thank you for taking it, you know, seriously and raising questions like you did. And we're going to hope for the absolute best. Of course. All right, and thank you for all the work you did to, to give us some savings. Oh, that should be pretty helpful. That's our for our whole exactly. All right, let's move on to the superintendent's evaluation. Unfortunately, because of absences and printer problems, etc., <laughs> you received. Beth's evaluation in your packet now. It's not that um, Jim did not work on this. Oh, he, uh, okay. he will give the whole report, okay. but the man tirelessly hand printed a combination of all the input from all of us. 
in order to come up with this. So, Jim, I turn it over to you. Thank you. So, everybody already has one. Yes. No. Yes, yeah, in your packets. Okay. It's in our packets. Okay. So, the subcommittee was myself, Kim, uh, Sarah, and Bonnie. And our charge was to look at that's goal, um, uh, standards and goals. So, standard one, which you see, was uh, instructional leadership. I'm going to go back for a second. So, the ratings were provided to me by eight of the 10 school committee members. And it was a uh, instrument that went out um, via email, and some people got it in their um, packets at, at a previous school meeting. School committee meeting. So standard one was instructional leadership, and it would uh, provide all students with high quality student centered instruction. There were two goals: review and exist review existing strategies for continuous improvement, and review and evaluate existing strategic objectives, demonstrating data driven decision making and adjustment to improve student learning. Uh, five of of the eight were exemplary, three were proficient. Um, and there are committee member comments, three or four that I put in on that one. Um, number two on that one is the strides Dr. Regulabuio has made in this area are nothing short of Herculean. She has built a strong administrative team, each with a special skill set, and the whole finally seems to be greater than the sum of its parts. You need the word then, sir. <laughs> I, I missed the meeting. And then I missed the word again. Then, after the word greater. Oh. Be greater than. Uh, okay. Um, the so then the second standard is management operations. There were two goals, again, uh, review and evaluate, and develop comprehensive protocols and procedures to ensure a safe, effective, and welcoming and inclusive environment for all learners. Uh, the mini seven voted exemplary, one proficient. Goal four was maximize quality instruction time. For students, optimal teaching time for faculty and staff, and consistent opportunities for administrators to collaborate within and across schools. Uh, again, seven exemplary, one proficient. Uh, and three, um, standard three is family and community engagement. Again, two goals. And ensure regular engagement with families to address the whole child's needs, including academic, social, emotional, and behavioral. Exemplary seven, one proficient. Goal six is prioritize the facilitation of open and regular timely opportunities for two way communication for all district stakeholders. Exemplary seven, one proficient. Um, and the last goal is professional culture. Promote a positive culture, school culture by actively engaging in reflective and research based practices, honoring our core values and inspiring lifelong learners. One goal on this one continue to build and enrich a culture by actively engaging in reflective and research based practices, honoring our core values and inspiring lifelong learners. Vote was five, exemplary, three, proficient. Um, The first comment was, I think the superintendent has excelled in being aware of Southern Berkshire Regional School District students, families, and community needs in both SEL and ESL and by helping install, promote, and support programs to encourage a healthy environment for all stakeholders. Finally, there's an overall uh, rating. Again, it was seven exemplary, one proficient, um, and the quote number to the comment number two is Dr. Regulu is an exemplary leader. She, by her example, has shown our district how to survive and even flourish under the most difficult situations. 
Dr. Regalbudo has shown, has done so much to show our students teaching and support staff for administrative team and our school committee that we can excel. We need to keep on envisioning what we want for our students and families. There's nothing wrong with saying once an eagle, always an eagle. Um, there were no ratings below proficient. Uh, thank you, Beth, for all you do for us. Okay. I'd like to take a motion to accept the report of the superintendent evaluation committee subcommittee i second it who we'll, we'll made that motion oh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry i'm tired okay. Okay. I'm I'm i'll second. make a motion oh, Keep seconded any discussion all right seeing none let's start on your side all right yes yes um I, since i was one of the two who did not complete the evaluation for reasons that i won't go into um I, I'm going to abstain from voting. Yes. 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 So we have one abstention and six yeses. Beth, thank you very much. We can now issue it. And um Jim, thank you for all your work. And before we issue it, I'll give you a few other words of this thing. <laughs> I know, right? I'll, I'll try again. Yeah, no, no, no. It was, it's just you know the editor and me. Yeah, I know. Right. And, Thank you and, so much. And my uh, minimal typing abilities, I right. think, are also here. Was, and yeah. Beth, it was clear from this much the work you've done. It's uh, very I, clear. I do yeah. greatly appreciate the time. I know it took a lot of people's time and. Um, the feedback. I, it does mean a lot to me, so I really do appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I can't believe I'm starting to stop it. And this is the most outstanding evaluation. Was hiding it. So I think you're finally <laughs> reaping what you came here to do. Well, I hope so. I hope so. Okay. She best practice makes perfect. That's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Unfinished business. Summer meeting schedule for us. We at our last meeting had approved two dates. Mm -hmm. The 20th of July and August 17th. And we were just not going to finalize it until today so that people could check to see if it's a problem. What date are we? 20, July, July 20. Oh, right. Okay. And August 17 as the two summer meeting dates. Yes, Dennis. For what it's worth on, on my calendar, I have July 20th as a possible, July 6th as a possible, uh, July, uh, August 10th as a possible, and 17th as a firm date. Okay. Um, I, but, you know, that's what was on my calendar. Doesn't that's mean it's that correct. Right. But that's <laughs> what we were fooling around with it. If you go back to the minutes we just approved, um, we think had finally gotten it down to those two dates. Uh, okay, page four of our minutes. The committee members will check their calendars and confirm their availability for an August 17th committee meeting. And we agreed to hold summer school committee meetings on June 29th and July 20th. So it's only 29th. August 29th is today, so we held it. We're holding it. So that gives us the 20th and August 17th. So all we have to do is approve the August 17th. Are you making a motion? Sarah? No, I'm no. I, I said no. <laughs> that way approve it. Making sure I can do that today. I don't what it said. Can you make it? I think so. I emailed. In that case, I make the motion. <laughs> oh, uh, motion to approve like a meeting on the August 17th? Yes. Okay. We have a second? Second. Okay. Let's vote starting this in. I'm going to know because I won't be here. So. Okay. Kyle? Yes. 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 Okay. And I'm a yes. All right. So we officially have July 20th and August 17th as having been approved for our summer meetings. Good. Can I just make a comment? Of course you may. Thank you. Um, 
I can't be here on the 20th. I'm July. Yeah, but if, if you have a court, if I, I might be able to do it by Zoom, I'm going to be in Chicago. Okay. Um, if I might be able to do it by right. Zoom, depend. Well, it's going to be normal time, right? Six o'clock. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I probably can, but should I? But I can't be personal. Yeah, Chicago was fine. That's right. Yeah. Right. Okay. So in that case, um, I will just let everybody know since we have a couple of people who are not here, said they were going to be here. Um, okay, so as of now, um, those those are the two approved dates. I'm gonna send out a note so everybody puts it on the calendar. Yes. We'll okay. be the subcommittees. Sarah. No reports, no right. dates. Um, I mean, sorry, I didn't mean that. <laughs> uh, community relations, public school advocacy. You have the last newsletter from that group, and um, do we have anything else? But then, I think I think in your folder is also um, a copy of the questions that were publicly put. Right? Isn't that the document that's yes. here? The very last piece. Yeah, there, oh, I think it's stapled. The, the so copy the got stapled um, a little crazy because the copier was having it that day. Mm -hmm. um, so on top of it is the question from the community conversation with whatever responses could be. This was already shared because it was asked for by. Um, so I think Lucy and Jake have seen it as well as. Um, mm -hmm. So it was the mother's fault. Anybody at this point? It's public. Once it's here, it's public. But it was public during that meeting, so I just uh, the copies in here for your reference. Thank you very much. Okay, policy, Dennis. Um, well, we everybody has the items in their packet for those that we voted on. Well, these were the second reads, actually. Exactly. That's what we're here to vote on. Right. Okay. So, you know, the, the policies, the first first one is AA, Regional School District Legal Status. Okay. Do we have a motion to approve? Moved. Okay. Move. Jim, we have a second? Second. Second by Sarah. All right. Any discussion on AA? Carl. Um, I, I, I'm going to preface my comment by saying that I'm not sure that, that my uh, memory or even my reading of Robert's rules uh, is accurate here. But my understanding on policy is that the first reading is the presentation of, of the policy, that the second reading is the time for comment and amendments to to a policy introduced, and that the third reading is a vote on, and, and and that's how our U.S. Senate works. That's how the House of Representatives work. That's how the House of Parliament work. Now, I don't know that that's accurate that you're doing it, but but when is the time to comment and ask for amendments, changes? Of these policies that we're that we're having a second reading of tonight. The, the second read. The second now, read. So it's right. not right. That, that's the way we've always. And done. We've okay, always, that was my question. Right. And Carl, we've always approved. We don't go to third reads. We always approve or disapprove it at the second read. Right. So yeah, we, do we we've have, never had a third read. Right. Okay. Yeah. So so if somebody has. Well, I mean, I mean, unless it was sixty years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Or before I came around. Okay. All right. Does anyone have any comments on the AA? AA? The first one, regional school in district legal status. It's pretty clear, but yeah. All right, if there are no comments on this one, I will take a vote on AA. Dennis? Aye. Yes. Jim? Yes. Carl? AA. Regional School District Legal Status is what it says. I said AA. 
Okay. It's a separate. See that document? Do some the next one. Back. Yeah, yeah, we could, Kyle. No, next yes. one. Hold on. That one. Quick. Go. It's just two pages back. It's there it is. The policy will start right there. I'm not no, in the front. There it is. It's a policy. There it is. Copy or die. Yeah. Okay. And I'm not. Okay, so we have that unanimous. All right, moving on. School improvement plan. Mm -hmm. They need a motion. So moved. Okay, do we have a second? Second. Okay, kind of a second there. All right. Discussion. Question. Question. What is chapter 150? The collective bargaining agreement. Right. No, it governs how you, I mean, what does it become this for? At all, it's for bargaining um, with the unions. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's your collective bargaining law. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, my only issue that should it be say the principles, the very first line. Well, it's a school improvement plan. So I think they're just saying like one school, one school at a time, like the principle of that school, right? The, the policy is singular. We have more than one, but mm -hmm. okay. And do you follow this time? No. Didn't we say not Did we say that it was November one? Uh, I'm not on policy, so I'm not looking at because we are. Okay. Um, Did we say November? Discussion is Anyone else on policy remember? Because uh, we don't do July one. I, I, I no, I remember you saying that we, could we do it in November, right? right because we don't even form the school council, right? Right. So okay. we uh, is is so we should change this to November one. Well, that's what we in in the room. I believe I we might not have captured it here, but it should be November one. I will accept a motion to change the date. So moved. Okay, we have a second. Second. Okay, let's vote on that. The change is to change it to November one. Dennis. Aye. Right. Sarah. Yes. Jen. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, yes. And, and the, you know, all right, change the November one. The rest of this is normal proceedings. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I have a question for the Dennis. Go ahead. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. To be right. recognized. Exactly. Um, Dennis, it says at the bottom source MASC consolidated and updated 2022. This is there. It, is it correct to say that? Our our policies proposed BDFA uh, hyphen E is comes from it comes from MASC. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Then let's take a vote on um, BDFA dash E. Kim. Hi. Yes. Kyle. Yes. 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 Unanimous. And I'll and I'll send the uh, modified version. Okay. I need a note here. Yeah, no, okay. Okay. Moving along. C H A slash C H C development and dissemination of procedures. I'll take a motion to approve. So moved. That was Carl. We have a second. <laughs> second. second. Okay, Sarah. All right, any discussion? Uh, again, the, the same question for Dennis. Then it says source MASC updated 2022. Uh, so this also, is it correct to say that this also yeah. comes from MASC? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. All right. And just for, uh, yes, can I sir. for just a minute, in, in case anybody is not aware, what what happened was that 
that we got somewhat behind in terms of MASC's policies because MASC basically outsourced their policies. The, our, the policies are held uh, not on our computer, but on MASC's computer. And basically that got hacked and that screwed up the whole world for a while. Right, yeah, no, I was waiting. Yeah, okay. Seeing no further comment, let's start with Kyle. Yes. Carl. Yes. Jim. Yes. Sarah. Yes. Dennis. Yes. Kim. Yes. And Bonnie. Yes. Moving along happily. <laughs> CHCA, approval of handbooks and directives. And even though Carl never likes the dress code part, <laughs> I'll take a motion to approve this policy. So moved. Okay, that was Jim. We have a second. Second. Okay. All right. Any commentary, discussion? Again. Um, yeah. Um, I think this is a little bit confusing, but I guess I, I, I think it's okay. It says that the principal, and that means, I guess, the principal of something in the district, uh, in consultation with the school council, shall prepare and distribute a handbook. Um, and then it later says school committee approval, which for any handbooks that pertain to required students. So it's it, the principal of the high school, for example, and the school council prepare the handbook uh, with rules, setting forth the rules pertaining to the conduct. It's clear here, although uh, the, 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 the language isn't that clear, but it is pretty clear when you combine the third paragraph with the first paragraph, is that because the handbooks pertain to required standards of conduct, it's, we don't prepare the handbook in any way, but we must approve it or it's not a, a handbook. Is that correct? Correct. Correct. Yeah. That's what it says, yeah. It doesn't say that actually. I we do it usually, but there's I, I forget which way it is. I think the employee because you I think the staff handbook because you oversee the bargaining units has to be approved. I don't know that the, the last, student the last sentence handbook has to be approved, but we sentence. usually that's share right. it with you anyway. That's just our practice. Uh, but I don't know that it requires your full approval. I can't violate any of your policies, but. I think that one's well, but, but then, then there's something wrong with this with with the wording of this because it says Carl, it says wait, the superintendent no will interruption. use their judgment as to whether is, whether it needs committee approval. All we approve all of the handbooks, but there is a question here. We don't distribute to students the faculty handbook, and we also require um that when it's just it's really distributed so that they have that last page that the parents have to sign did you see what i'm saying i i make them available to you i make the mm -hmm. student handbook available to you but i don't necessarily need you to approve it uh, i do for the first i need i do for the personnel one because you're the overall employer but we've always the policy here and the practice has always been that we approve the student handbooks. It, it, this, may I speak? Yes, about this? you may. Uh, if Beth thinks, which I guess she does, that her position on this is correct, then this policy is incorrect because in paragraph one, it says the student handbook sets forth the rules pertaining to conduct of students. First sentence of paragraph three, committee approval will be necessary for any handbooks that pertain to required standards of conduct for employees or students. So 
the, 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 the principal in conjunction with the school council prepares a student handbook with rules pertaining to conduct. Committee approval will be necessary for handbooks that pertain to standards of conduct for employees or students. And you can't, sentence. you can't, sentence. but Beth can't maintain that it's not required. We get it, but because this policy said we either have to change the policy or or eliminate a portion of the, of this proposed CHCA because it, it it's inconsistent with with Beth's belief that committee approval is not required. It says right here that it is. It doesn't. Right. It doesn't say in conjunction with. It says in consultation with the school council. You could consult somebody and take none of their advice. I no, mean, no. Uh, but I'm not. I, I'm not concerned with what the school council does because we're not on the school council. Can we be on the school council? Can a committee yeah. member be on the school council? But that, yeah. no, but that's not what yeah. I can, sir, can, or the parent, yeah. Here, here's what it is. <laughs> the first paragraph is really dealing with the student handbook. The last paragraph is more comprehensive as it deals with students and faculty. So I think this needs to be, and it also nowhere does it say which we require that the last page of the student handbook be signed by a parent or guardian and returned. Because that's a procedure. But it's always been in the policy. I, I think, well, that's the problem. So you, I, I don't know. I don't think it was in the policy. I don't have the current policy. Really? Yeah, I don't think it so. was. I mean, that's a procedure. So when you're you're charging me with implementing what you said, it didn't say in there that's the signature. That's how we chose to do it. But I don't believe it was in the policy before. I actually have it in my office. But um, well, I would add a sentence that in that first paragraph require the. I don't, you know, why I don't like the idea that a parent says i've never seen this never seen it or never signed it right but they never have seen it and they never have signed it i move that beth suggested addition to the policy uh be approved and what's that what's your addition to the policy no did i say that yes, yes you I did meant, i mean i'm sorry i'm not sure i made one but yeah, thank you i made, made i'm in fun okay all right the the addition your addition being that a parent a parent of a, each student or guardian or guardian a parent or or a legal guardian is required to sign and return the book the signature page at least the signature page is there a second to that motion right guess it you're thinking happen. the same thing i'm thinking yeah um, if you want to drive a car you got to know the rules of the road like marco school <laughs> no rules i mean i don't see the point of having a parent no. or sign it. Yeah. I mean, I, I can know, honestly say I don't think I've ever signed one. And I have three of the best behaved kids in district. And that's the reason. Not everybody else does. But it but what is it to me? But the, the point is, right, we make it available. We make it's it like available. everything else. If you don't sign it, that doesn't mean you're not you're that's not true. held to the no, I, we're I just, still held to it. No, I, mean, I guess follow the same like everybody else. All right, not everybody yeah. not falling out. At least you're just, you're just saying when well, you have to sign it. It's like all right. I'll tell you what my <laughs> I'll let it die because there isn't a second. If I have a child and there's an issue about the prom, mm -hmm. and there's a whole policy in the handbook, and they turn around at the hearing and say, "I have no idea what parent what you're talking about." I can't, as a principal, then turn around and say, you have an obligation to review and sign. Mm -hmm. I think it gives more ammunition in terms of, we're not talking about you, we're talking about- No, 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 about, but I, I get your point. But right. as that thing, it's also like, well, I gave you the opportunity to do it. You chose not to. So therefore, it's not that I didn't make the information available. So the bad is on me, not the school, because they made it available. 
So that's the way I look at it. So, so I follow well, the guidelines like, because we don't have to debate no, this. There was no saying, second yeah. for it. But I'm just saying, Sarah, I'm just saying if it's in the policy that's on the website, it might not be a bad idea to add it because then you can, you know, refer back to policy itself. You These are on the website, right? Are you seconding Carl's motion to add the signature line? Yes. I'll second that. All right. We have a second. Now, any other comments? Because, all right, therefore, we're going to take. It's an oversight. So, this can I vote no? Um, it's in I don't know if it can, I just don't know how it can hurt to have. Yeah, I don't think I. It is an overstep. Okay. So, vote. Okay, I'm starting with you, Dennis. Oh, uh, well, yes. Sarah? Yes. 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 No. Yes. All right, it passed. <laughs> so who's going to enforce this? It only needs to be enforced when a parent says, uh, you know, you never told me this rule. You never did whatever. And it gives the principal... I'm saying as a, an administrator, if I can turn and say this, this is what it is. We passed it. I don't, you know. No, no. My it. question is, and this is just a general question: mm -hmm. is you pass something that you're not going to enforce? No, it's we're going to do our best to enforce it. But I'm saying is, we were enforcing it anyway at the building right. level. This is just an overreach, in my opinion, about this whole thing. Right. That's why. <laughs> I just think it's protecting the administrators who say we have it this way. So that's the change that a sentence to be added in that. Next one is uh, C. Wait, we haven't approved. We haven't approved the policy. Oh, I'm sorry. No, <laughs> no we just did the amendment part. So we would what, now. What did we make it as a as an amendment? We, we, the signature of a parent. The signature of a parent or a guardian would have is required each year on the handbook received by his or her child. So well, now I'm going to say, like, like, so what if they don't sign? What are you going to do? <laughs> it's, it's, just, it's only if it comes up, if they don't sign it, only comes up as an issue when you, you're having a hearing on something and the parent then says, I have no idea what you're talking about. Well, here was an obligation and, oh, maybe you should have, you know, really looked at that. It also means the principals have to let the students know when you get this, you're taking it home and someone's going to look at it and sign it. So that's all. It's not going to be a problem for you or your kids, but they're going to be parents. That I had no idea. It's not any different than what we're already doing. Right. You Nothing already different. do it. So you're just adding that sentence in the first paragraph. All right. Let's so so tell me again what we're adding. I'm sorry. Okay. So like after the period following next school year, you're saying oh, after the first sentence to distribute to each student a handbook setting forth the rules pertaining to contact of students. Parents, a parent or a guardian is required to sign. Um, so you're receive, putting it after the first sentence. Right. A parent. A parent. Or guardian. Or guardian. Is required to is sign. Required to sign. That he or she has received and reviewed the handbook. They have right. They they have received and reviewed the handbook. Reviewed and accepted. You want to stick that in there in some way? 
I just, uh, to, I don't think I would. I think to, that's overreach. What yes. does that mean? Except <laughs> yeah, they I looked at it and reviewed the student handbook, so we don't get in confusion with the teacher handbook. Reviewed, and I agree the with Dennis. Student handbook. We're not that they accepted it. All right. So as amended, we're voting on approval. We'll start, Dennis. Yes. Sarah. Yes. 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 <clears throat> Yeah. And yes, so that's uh, five to two. All right. Moving along. You didn't take a vote on the whole policy, did you? Okay. That was the whole policy. Okay. As amended. Okay, and the next amendment. one. C-H-C-A-E. C-H-C-A-E is required student handbook contents. This is required. All right, um, I'll take a motion so we can discuss it. So moved. That was Carl, second. Second. Jim, okay, we can now discuss. Dennis, my question is, was this added um, because it wasn't covered anywhere else? Uh, it basically, it replaced what was, what used to be called the approval of handbooks and directives. <laughs> Renamed to required student handbook contents. So, are you saying this existed before? This is a rename. Because uh, uh, it doesn't well, refer to MSC. I, I, they, they may have made some changes in it. I don't, I don't have a copy of the old. Okay. Thirty-seven H of the new is updated. These okay. are the thirty-seven H was. Uh, that's why it's a, a legal reference. Okay. Any changes to 37H, and these are the requirements as a result. Okay. Thank you. Book. All right. So everyone understands this is how it came about. Any further discussion? All right. Seeing none. No. no. Oh. I, um, I, I'm not sure that this is necessary because I don't uh, have uh, a photograph in my mind of MGL 7137H. But do you know, Dennis? I mean, I think you indicated that you may not know. But on par on, on paragraph thir three, uh, so this uh, I, I, I'm specifically concerned about student rights here and due process. Um, they should be notified of their opportunity in writing of their opportunity for a hearing. Uh, provided, however, the student may have representation. Is it made clear that they are allowed to have a lawyer present? Yes. It is? Yes. 37 H? Yes. Okay. So representation includes a lawyer and or... Lawyer. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Then, uh, then I have no, no further comment. Okay. Any other questions or comments? All right. Seeing none. Kim? Stain? Kyle? Uh, yes. 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 So that's six to one. Four. So it's approved. C H C A D E is approved. All right. We're now on. Um, it says remove regional school district budget transfer authority. So we're removing. Can you explain this one? Oh wait, we need a vote first. Oh, we need a motion first. Well, so we motion have to, to remove. Is that what we're doing? That's to remove this from the policy handbook? Right. It says on the so on there's okay. Two so moved. I move. I move to remove it. From okay. We have a second. Second. Okay. I'll second. Go ahead. Now explanation. You want me to do it? Dennis, do you want ask. Beth to do it? This is my ask. Pardon? 
Do you want me to do it or do you want to do it? This was my ask. So do you want me to do this? Sure. Yeah, go ahead. So um, this came about based on uh, the meeting that we sat through transfers for 50 cents, um, you know, and what I consider to be a waste of time and not a, a normal practice in school districts. So um, I, I just asked that this be removed and then we wrote a new budget transfer authority. And the difference being that um, oftentimes you might transfer between lines within the same cost center. Um, and it could be a dollar here or there, you know, rounding, nothing material. But if you are going to make a change in a cost center, meaning I just I fired five people, but I wanted to buy a truck instead, that should come before the school committee because you have approved your basic sense about um, where you would like the assets to be allocated. And that's what I and the superintendent brought to you when you approved the budget and then represented that to the member towns. So um, I, I think removing what we had and being more clear with what um, we should be doing with the budget transfer authority is the goal, if that makes sense. Yeah, you can see from what you're asking in, in paragraph two of the new one, it, it makes sense. I mean, the amount of time to write down and move 50 right. cents from this account to this account when it's not material is is okay. not a good right. use of anybody's time. Mm -hmm. Any any comment or question on this? All right, let's start. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 All right, that's approved unanimously, the removal. So now we are on the substitute. So this is policy to be checked. The rename. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So Dennis, go do it. Uh basic basically this is it's DBJ over again, but it's got you know the changes that, that, that Beth made. All right, do I have a motion for that? So move. Jim, second. 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 All right. We'll take Sarah a little difference there. Uh, sorry. Any discussion on that? Really, thank you for. Uh, I thought you that. might like that time. Yes. Yeah. In your life. Mm -hmm. All right. Any questions on this one? It really makes sense. Okay. Let's get ready to vote. We'll start with you, Jim. Yes. 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 And call. Yes. And me, yes. Okay, unanimous. DBJ. Okay, uh, next one is harassment of students, J I C K. And this is a brand new policy that MASC came up with. Okay. And it's uh Lengthly to say the least. <laughs> All right, do we have a motion on this so we can discuss it? So yes, Jim, second. Seconds. Thank you, Kyle. All right. Discussion. Beth, you had something to say about it? I was just trying to see if I remember. Um, I, I mean, honestly, I think in the future we really should have the old and the new in here so that people Good can point. see that. Mm -hmm. Um, I believe, I believe like they broke it. We've had a policy like this before, not as detailed. Um, now they have this addition of harassment and I think they broke it out with employee to student and student to student. I think they had uh they, that's what was added. Um, well what so one of the, cha one say, of the let, changes let the superintendent okay excuse me. So uh, and then they included um there's an asterisk um about um uh in traits historically associated with race um uh, around hair texture, hair type, hair length and protective hairstyles. That was definitely added to harassment. Um, so I think, I think those were the changes. Yep. 
Okay. And Dennis, you wanted to say something regarding this? No, nope. that's that's it. That was the, that was the major change yep. that was made. Okay. All right. I'm surprised they didn't. I mean, given the hair thing, we don't have an issue here at a previous place I worked. It was an issue for the state population with harassment related to head covering. So, but I'm fine with what you've got here. Since this the we only may way. have to adjust it. Excellent. No, it needs to be removed. That's the next one. Oh, okay. See how it just had students. Yes, yes, students. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. okay. All right. Um, we'll take a vote here. Let's start with Kim. Yes. All right. Yes. 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 Unanimous. Thank you. And now you want to speak to the removal one? Yeah, the last but not least is is JBA uh, student to student harassment that uh, basically is for removal. Okay. All right. We have a motion on that. Jim, that was you saying so moved. So moved. Okay. We have a second on that. Second. Um, Kim, great. Um, any further discussion? Yes, it was is the motion to remove this? Yes, yeah. oh, okay. because yeah. it's incorporated. Right, right. It's incorporated the prior, prior. Yeah. Okay, any other discussion? Okay, let's start with Carl. Yes. Jim? Yes. 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 Uh, yes. Okay, unanimous. I vote yes. Wow. Thank you so much. We got them done. We got them done. Personnel negotiations. Do I have anything? Because you, you're not okay. Not yet. Okay. So buildings and grounds. Oh, it's not here. I don't think they met. No. Mm -hmm. Which uh, superintendent evaluation? We actually we took care of <laughs> Executive minutes review. No, Carl no. gave us a report the last time. Yeah, and, and there's no change. There's no change from that. Okay. Curriculum. We haven't met again. Um, all right, we don't have that. We don't have that. We don't have that. Future agenda items. Let's go waiting for our audit report. Okay. And anybody have anything else to be added to the calendar in the future? Okay. Seeing none. Guess what? <laughs> Does anyone want to make a motion to adjourn? I mean, don't all make it right. All right, um, we have a second. Do I see any injections to adjourning? No, seeing none. We're adjourned. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.